Hi, I'm Aaron. Welcome to More Than The Sun. Today I'm going to talk to you about some different ways that you can look at the sun using cardboard, paper, even a telescope. And I'll talk about how you can use them to view an eclipse and to look for sunspots. And we'll also discuss some of the science behind these different methods. If you're lucky enough to be at the right place at the right time when there's a total eclipse, you can look directly at the sun as long as the moon is completely blocking out all the sunlight. But if the sunlight isn't being blocked out all the way, then it's never safe to look directly at the sun. It will literally burn your eyes. You can safely view the sun if you have special lenses or welding goggles that are rated for the sun. You can even purchase a special solar filter to put on the end of your telescope. If you attempt any of these methods, please make sure you do your research and you're certain that you have lenses that are rated for viewing the sun. The simplest way to look at the sun is actually an image projected through a pinhole. All you have to do is take a card or a piece of cardboard, something like that, and punch a hole in it with a thumbtack, hold it up to the sunlight, and look for the light that you see in its shadow. That light you see is an actual projection of the sun through the card that you're holding. It's like the difference between looking at a projector screen versus a projector bulb. You can't really see anything when you look at the projector bulb because there's so much light, but you can see the image once you look at the screen it's projecting onto. To get a slightly better image, you can instead punch a hole in a box after masking any gaps on the sides. This provides for a clearer image because the box blocks out any excess light. The reason we can see the image of the sun in the shadow of the card or on the back of the box is because the pinhole is only allowing through light that focuses at a single point. The key to seeing an image is having light that shares a focal point, which is the place where all the light traveling converges. The sun emits a lot of light, going in every direction. We can imagine that each individual beam or ray of light is a photon, traveling in a straight line from its source to its destination. Photons that left the sun over eight minutes ago are now converging at the pinhole and projecting an image of the sun in its shadow. Only a tiny fraction of the photons emitted by the sun actually travel through the opening you created. As you watch an eclipse, you may notice that the projection you create has actually been rotated 180 degrees. If you were to try drawing it out, you can see that after passing through the focal point, individual rays end up on the opposite side of the image, causing this rotation to happen. The downside for using this method to view the sun is that the pinhole doesn't really let through very much light and so there's a limit to how big you can make the image before it starts to disappear. It turns out you don't even need to make a pinhole to view the sun. Every time you look at the shadows of trees on the ground, you see images of the sun projected by tiny focal points created in gaps between the leaves. You can actually watch an eclipse just by looking at shadows on the ground. Many of the other ways of looking at the sun involve using lenses. While the pinhole limits only light that focuses at that one point, a lens can collect light traveling in a large area and bend it, causing it to focus. We experience this constantly because lenses in our eyes cause light to focus on our retina. This, by the way, is why we need to avoid looking directly at the sun. We've all seen what happens when we focus sunlight with a magnifying glass. The lenses in our eyes do a similar thing with light passing through. They focus the light to a point on our retina, and if we're looking at sunlight, then we're taking a whole bunch of energy and focusing it to a single point, causing it to get really hot and to burn. The effect is even worse if you're looking at the sun through a telescope or binoculars. I've linked below where somebody actually tested this out to some pretty horrifying results. A telescope has a lens that collects light from a wider area than our eyes can then focuses it to a point, and the image is then magnified through an eyepiece that makes it appear as if it's much closer to us than it really is. Although it's not safe to look directly at the sun through a telescope, you can catch the sun's projection on a piece of paper or foam board. This is how I'm planning to view the eclipse. For this method, you want a cheap telescope. There are a bunch under $30 online, and if your telescope has a smaller finder scope attached, make sure it's covered up or removed. You point the telescope at the sun and look for the light coming out of the eyepiece. The key to aiming the telescope is by making its shadow on the ground as small as possible. Then you can adjust the focus of the telescope to make the image of the sun clearer. You can see the image better if you get something to provide some extra shade. And you can get a pretty large image of the sun this way. 
This is because a telescope provides much more light than a pinhole does. The image is big and clear enough that you can even see sunspots on the surface of the sun. Here's an image I took of the projection compared with an image taken from an observatory on the same day. If you're planning to use this method, make sure you use a cheap refractor telescope instead of some of the more expensive telescopes that could be damaged if pointed at the sun for too long without using a solar filter. I've included some links below for to some telescopes that would work great for this. And when you're done using your telescope to look at the sun or view an eclipse, you can always use it to look at the moon. Check out some pictures I took of the moon using my telescope. If you're interested in more of a project, there's some really neat ones that people have developed, including this wooden eclipse viewer and the sun funnel. I've provided links to each of them below. How are you planning to view the eclipse? Let us know down in the comment section. And thank you for taking the time to watch. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please click the thumbs up button and click subscribe if you're interested in seeing future projects. Thank you.